So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like. It really is a beautiful Sunday when one of your favorite artists wakes up with post rap beef clarity and decides instead of deadening the beef in private and then simply announcing that he and Kendrick Lamar will not be beefing, he decides to do a whole humble soapbox moment on stage in front of thousands of fans, a moment that will be recorded for millions of people to see on the internet and laugh at him and question if it has hurt his career or his legacy which is what we'll be discussing in this video. It really is a beautiful Sunday when you see all the fans and fan pages who came out of their hub to support their artist against one of the biggest challenges to his legacy in tears or going through a midlife crisis because of this artist taking back their words in such a grand gesture. Some people are out here saying that it's their 9-11 and honestly, I don't know about that. I wouldn't even say that that's very weird, but hey, it's a man of speaking. In case for some reason, as a hip hop fan, you don't know what I'm talking about. Here's the rundown. Just days after Jacob put out his diss track and accompanying album to counter Kendrick Lamar's diss from a week earlier he then comes down with a serious case of the Tom and Jerry's and now he feels sorry so he as I said earlier decides to apologize to Kendrick and call off the beef I teased it before but here's the full clip me right so I'm so proud of that project except for one part it's one part of that shit that make me feel like, man, that's the lamest shit I ever did in my fucking life, right? And I know this is not what a lot of people wanna hear. I know I can hear my niggas up there right now like, nah, no, I don't do that, but I gotta keep it 100 with y'all, right? I damn near had a relapse, right? Because y'all heard some shit that happened two, two, three weeks ago, however long it was. Y'all heard that bazooka that was dropped on the motherfucking game, right? So all of this time of me moving on my own accord, for the first time I was tested. Why am I tested? Because I got the world and I got my niggas like, what you going to do, Cole? <laughs> my niggas like, Bit boy, I must have had a thousand missed calls. Oh, my fucking God. Text flooded. I couldn't even answer my shit. Nigga, it's wartime. Right? Niggas want to see blood. And, and I was conflicted because... One, I know my heart, you know what I mean? And like, I know how I feel about my peers, these two niggas that I've just been blessed to even stand beside in this game, let alone chase, chase their greatness, right? So I felt conflicted because I'm like, bro, I know I don't really feel no way, but the world want to see blood. I don't know if y'all can feel that, but the world want to see blood. So I say all of that to say, in my spirit of trying to like get this music out, I ain't gonna lie to y'all. I moved in a way that was, that I feel spiritually feel bad on me. Like, like I try to like jab my nigga back and I try to keep it friendly. But at the end of the day, when I listen to it and when it comes out and I see the talk, that shit don't sit right with my spirit. That shit make me feel, that shit disrupts my fucking peace. So what I wanna say right here tonight is in the midst of me doing that and, and in that shit, trying to find a little angle and downplay this, this nigga's fucking uh, catalog and his greatness. I want to say right now tonight, how many people think Kendrick Lamar is one of the greatest motherfuckers to ever touch a fucking microphone? Dreamville, y'all love Kendrick Lamar, correct? As do I. So, I just want to come up here and be like, publicly be like, bro, that was the lamest, like, goofiest shit. And it make, I say all that to say, it made me feel like 10 years ago when I was moving incorrectly. And I pray that God align me back up on my purpose and on my path. You know what I mean? I pray that my nigga really didn't feel no way. And if he did, my nigga, I got my chin out. Take your best shot. I'm gonna take that shit on the chin, boy. Do what you do. You know what I mean? Like, all good. Like, it's, it's love. And I pray that, you know, I pray that y'all are like, forgive a nigga for like the misstep and then, and then I can get back to my true path. Cause I ain't gonna lie to y'all. The past two days felt terrible. Like, it let me know how good I've been sleeping for the past 10 years. So all of that to say, man, I want to I now perform the song that's a reminder to me of 
getting back on the right path and getting in tune with God. And the name of the song is called Love Yours. I want to do that for y'all right now. Now, I see some people talking about how this has ruined J. Cole's career and they have a point, but not really. This conversation isn't really about career. Here's why. J. Cole's career is fine. He still has had the best run of songs and verses in the last three years in hip hop. He's still one of the biggest draws to date and is still probably more successful now than ever. There's really no taking that away from him. This mixtape album situation with Mighty Leap Data is still going to go number one, etc, etc. Will the apology reduce his selling power? Not really, because the people who wanted blood, as he said, while they're extremely vocal, they're in the minority. And they are mostly people who are such diehard fans that they will actually listen to basically anything and would only stop if it was found out that Cole was on Epstein's list or something. And when you look at the likes of Drake, it's clear that there's still a large number of people who just care about good music or vibes and would actually like their artists to remain mostly unproblematic. A lot of them female fans or just people that subscribe to a more tolerant view of hip hop. So if his career is not what's at stake, then what is then? Well, in this case, it's about legacy. Here's why. J. Cole went back on his word. He came out swinging, he had Kendrick on the ropes, with how he got a significant number of people to back him on calling to him a butterfly trash or at least second guessing its greatness because the truth is, apart from a few hit songs, the All Rights and the King Kunters, most of that album is not in people's daily or even weekly rotation. And so to apologize, while that doesn't invalidate what he said and why he said it and perhaps a different artist who's also in this beef might use it to his advantage, it doesn't validate the people backing it and makes it feel weird to even bother backing it or playing it and that's a terrible thing to do to his fans if nothing else. Now why would J. Cole do this? Why apologize to Kendrick? Is Kendrick just that scary? Is he really Candyman? Well, no. Obviously, J. Cole was just a different type of rapper, or at least he's trying to be. Even Machine Gun Kelly didn't withdraw from a rap battle with an even more seasoned boogeyman, and he was literally up against a giant. Kendrick Lamar isn't that scary to J. Cole. In fact, the consensus up until the last 24 hours was that Cole was definitely the best rapper in the game at the moment. The problem is, J. Cole and his pacifistic nature, especially as a rapper, are working against this narrative. And honestly, I saw this coming. I can't believe more people didn't. Here's why. J. Cole clearly overreacted with this track, even though it was smart, and here's why. The line from 7 Minute Drill where he questions the greatness of Kendrick's albums is definitely over the line for someone who was barely dissed in Kendrick's original diss. The there's no big three line is literally the only part that Kendrick could feel hurt by. And as someone who basically accepted bronze medal in his league all too recently, putting himself in a position where he seems like he desperately wants to be considered the best now or to shoot down Kendrick is a bit weird. Like. I'm sure he sat down and thought to himself, why didn't he just ignore it? Like, he of all people seemed like they would. But here's why it was smart. His response, while a bit overboard, was a good stone to throw if he really wants to take down Kendrick Lamar. Because attacking the legacy of Kendrick's albums, how he's revered in the industry, all of that is essentially attacking Kendrick's strongest defense. And so to knock it down or to even put a significant dent in it would have led to great results and increase the likelihood that the Cole Drake side of this war would would win and it did lead to great results that i said earlier all the j cole fans and kendrick haters came out of the woods to try and significantly chip the legacy of kendrick's greatest work but j cole just didn't anticipate how he would react emotionally which is a hilarious thing to say about a rapper but the truth is this whole violence beef thing hasn't been in his nature, hasn't been his way for a long time now. J. Cole has been on this anti-violence, anti-aggressive competition in rap thing for a while now. The funny thing is he's been doing that while elevating his own status, killing the competition with kindness and stealing the best verses on their own songs. And so it's funny to me that what finally got Cole to snap a bit was Kendrick essentially calling all of that bullshit straight to his face. Especially as Kendrick is someone who he has claimed to revere for such a long time and considers him to be the big three along with Drake and himself. And so because of this, this apology, it was inevitable. But was he wrong for this? The simple answer is yes. The long answer is hell yes. Here's why. Yes, there's been a conscious effort to make rap less violent, less sexist and homophobic and whatnot, and even less racist, I guess, with how many white rappers and non-black rappers there are now, just more tolerant as a whole. And this applies to the battle rap and rap beef scene too, especially when it's slightly contrived and not personal like this one is with the big three. 
with the closest thing to this beef being personal being that drake and kendrick have been at loggerheads for years and this was kind of really needed and pushed by the drake kendrick logic millennial generation of rappers because in the past in the history of hip-hop these personal attacks have eventually led to violence and even when it didn't it always left the rapper who lost looking violated like yes pusha t's this got drake to put his son out there but did we really need to be digging into another man's business like that well that's just the collateral damage of beef sometimes but the problem is this is a rap beef not a real beef ken Lamar said as much when he was asked about his control verse years ago is that same now? place same place mm -hmm. this is all i love from I the that. moment i did the verse to after the verse you know what i mean i think hip-hop is is a sport so you're gonna have these little spits and spats and it's all good because personally i respect these dudes as you know as, as people and the difference is these contrived beefs like these aren't actually violent. They are mostly for entertainment and they're not personal, but they're just trying to get the best out of all the rappers involved. Which is interesting because when you really think about it, it does kind of strip the entertainment value away from it and also makes the name calling and the fake aggression seem kind of dumb. And of course, that's a blurry line that someone like Cole is clearly scared of crossing in some kind of anger or while just having fun but with his apology the questions surrounding his legacy have begun floating around instead of having an apology he could have just chosen to keep it clean keep it so sort of friendly even though everyone joe budding out there is talking about how he doesn't sound aggressive enough on seven minute drill but the question is is he still big three well here's the thing it's simple but complicated like it's not over yet kendrick still has to reply and if he doesn't let him out of this fight and they do fight and Cole would definitely will bring the heat now because now Kendrick has sort of made it personal by swatting away Cole's attempts to be peaceable, Kendrick might just save his career. So in a funny way, Cole's career is now in the hands of Kendrick Lamar but in such a way that if Kendrick doesn't respond, it's actually worse for Cole. And of course, in an interesting situation for Drake, he has left Drake in a sore spot who if you're wondering why he hasn't responded yet i have a theory that involves military tactics so stay tuned for that by subscribing